Today's flying mission is flying the Soviet beast behind me, Illusion. The aviation world has always been dominated by two giants, Boeing and Airbus. For decades, these Western manufacturers have set the standard for long-haul wide-body aircraft, with models like the 700 Cessna X and A350 leading the charge. So my personal feeling about the L96 is actually an improved version from the L86, which is noise as hell. This airplane now can fly intercontinental with winglets, with four modern engine, less noisy. But now, Russia is stepping back into the arena with a revived contender, the IL-96-400M, an aircraft that carries both ambition and the weight of history. Can it really challenge the established order? Or is this just another chapter in a long struggle for recognition? The origins of Russia's wide body, dream, to understand where the IL-96-400M fits into the picture, you need to go back to the 1970s. That's when Russia introduced the IL-86, its first wide-body aircraft. It was designed for long-haul routes and came with some unique features, like built-in staircases that allowed passengers to board without needing external ground equipment. This made it ideal for airports with limited infrastructure, a common issue across the Soviet Union. But those staircases came at a cost, literally eating into cargo space and adding weight. By the late 1980s, it became clear that Russia needed something more competitive. Enter the IL-96-300, a significant upgrade over its predecessor. This new model featured PS-90 turbofan engines, a major leap forward from older Soviet power plants. For the first time, Russia had an engine that could compete with Western designs in terms of performance and fuel efficiency. The IL-96-300 was quieter, cleaner, and more modern. It seemed like Russia was finally catching up, but commercial success remained elusive. Airlines weren't particularly enthusiastic about the IL-96-300. Its capacity was limited compared to Western alternatives, and operating costs weren't competitive enough. The market was already crowded with proven aircraft from Boeing and Airbus, and breaking into that space required more than just a decent jet. It required trust, economies of scale, and global support networks that Russia simply didn't have. The IL-96-400 attempts a comeback. In the early 2000s, Russia tried again with the IL-96-400. This was an extended version of the IL-96-300, stretched by nearly 10 meters to accommodate more passengers. It featured aerodynamic improvements, better avionics, and upgraded onboard systems. The idea was to make it more appealing to airlines by increasing capacity and range. In an all-economy configuration, it could carry up to 436 passengers, making it competitive with other wide-body jets. Despite these enhancements, the IL-96-400 still struggled. The global aviation market was shifting. Airlines were increasingly favoring twin-engine aircraft over four-engine designs. Twin-engine jets like the Boeing 777 and Airbus A330 offered better fuel efficiency, lower maintenance costs, and the ability to fly the same routes thanks to ETOP certification. Four engines meant more parts to maintain, more fuel to burn, and higher operating expenses. The economics just didn't work in favor of the IL-96-400. So the program languished. Only a handful of IL-96 variants were ever built, mostly for Russian government use and state-owned carriers like Aeroflot. For a while, it seemed like the IL-96 story was over. Why Russia is reviving the IL-96-400M. Then came the sanctions. Following geopolitical tensions and Western restrictions, Russia found itself cut off from many of the aircraft and components it had been importing. Aeroflot and other Russian carriers had been operating fleets of Boeing and Airbus jets, but acquiring new ones, or even getting parts and support for existing ones, became increasingly difficult. Suddenly, the need for a domestically produced wide-body aircraft wasn't just a matter of pride. It was a strategic necessity. This is where the IL-96-400M enters the picture. It's the latest iteration of the IL-96 family, with extended range, improved fuel efficiency, and modernized systems. But more importantly, it represents Russia's determination to build an aviation industry that doesn't rely on Western suppliers. 
the IL-96 of 400M is being positioned as a solution to the country's long-haul aviation needs, a jet that can be built, maintained, and operated entirely within Russia's borders. Of course, that's easier said than done. Building a competitive wide-body aircraft requires more than just willpower. It requires cutting-edge technology, reliable engines, and a supply chain capable of delivering components at scale. And that brings us to the engine question. The engine problem and the PS90A2. Every aircraft needs a reliable engine, and for the IL-96-400M, that engine is the PS90A2. This is an upgraded version of the original PS90A, which first appeared in the late 1980s. The PS90A was a milestone for Russian aviation. It was quieter and more fuel efficient than its Soviet-era predecessors, and it met international emissions and noise standards. It was Russia's first engine that could genuinely compete with Western designs like the Rolls-Royce RB211 and Pratt & Whitney PW4000. But even the PS90A wasn't quite enough. Airlines wanted better fuel efficiency and lower operating costs, so Russia developed the PS90A2, which delivers around 10% better fuel consumption compared to the original. That might not sound like much, but in aviation, even small improvements can translate into millions of dollars in savings over an aircraft's lifetime. Still, the PS90A2 isn't on par with the latest Western engines. It's a capable power plant, but it's not a game changer. And that's a problem because the IL-96-400M uses four of them. Four engines mean higher fuel burn, more maintenance, and greater operating costs compared to modern twin-engine competitors. In an industry where margins are razor thin, that's a significant disadvantage. The PD-35 and the future of Russian aviation. Russia knows this. That's why the country is developing the PD-35, a next-generation engine designed to rival the General Electric GE9X, which powers the Boeing 777X. The PD-35 is expected to produce up to 76,000 pounds of thrust, making it one of the most powerful engines in the world. More importantly, it's being designed to cut fuel burn, reduce emissions, and lower maintenance costs. If successful, the PD-35 could change everything. It would allow Russia to develop a twin-engine version of the IL-96-400M, dramatically improving its competitiveness. Lower fuel consumption would translate into reduced operating costs, making the aircraft more attractive to airlines. It would also reduce carbon emissions, a crucial factor as the aviation industry faces increasing pressure to address climate change. But the PD-35 program is facing significant challenges. Developing a high-thrust turbofan engine is incredibly complex. It requires advanced materials, precision manufacturing, and years of rigorous testing. And because of sanctions, Russia has to do all of this without relying on foreign components or technology. That's no small task. The original goal was to bring the PD-35 into service by 2025, but that timeline has proven to be overly ambitious. Delays are common in engine development and the PD-35 is no exception. Even if the engine does eventually enter production, it will still need to be certified by international aviation authorities before it can be used on commercial flights. That's another hurdle, and not a small one. Can a four-engine design still work? In the meantime, the IL-96-400M is stuck with its four PS-90A2 engines, and that raises an important question. Is a four-engine design still viable in today's aviation market? There are some advantages. Four engines provide redundancy, which can be reassuring on long over-water routes or flights over remote areas where emergency landing options are limited. If one engine fails, the aircraft still has three others to keep it in the air. That's a level of safety that some operators value, particularly for government and VIP flights. But the disadvantages are hard to ignore. Four engines mean higher fuel burn, more frequent maintenance, and greater overall operating costs. Twin-engine aircraft like the Boeing 777 and Airbus A350 can fly the same routes more efficiently thanks to advances in engine reliability and ETOPS certification. Airlines have little reason to choose a four-engine jet when a twin-engine alternative offers better economics. This is why the PD-35 is so critical. 
Without it, the IL-96-400M is essentially a niche aircraft, suitable for specific government and state-owned carrier operations, but not competitive in the global commercial market. With the PD-35, however, a twin-engine version could be developed, opening up new possibilities. The Geopolitical Context Beyond the technical challenges, there's a geopolitical dimension to the IL-96-400M that can't be ignored. Western sanctions have forced Russia to prioritize self-sufficiency in aviation. The IL-96-400M isn't just about building a competitive aircraft. It's about proving that Russia can maintain a viable aerospace industry without Western support. This has implications beyond just passenger aviation. The PD-35 engine, if successfully developed, could be adapted for military transport aircraft, cargo freighters, and other applications. It could become a symbol of Russia's technological resilience, demonstrating that innovation can thrive even under challenging circumstances. But self-sufficiency comes at a cost. Developing aircraft and engines in isolation is expensive and time-consuming. It also limits export potential. Airlines outside of Russia are unlikely to adopt the IL-96-400M unless it can prove itself to be as reliable, efficient, and cost-effective as Western alternatives. And even then, geopolitical considerations may discourage some carriers from purchasing Russian-built jets. What does the future hold? So where does this leave the IL-96-400M? In the short term, it's likely to serve primarily Russian state-owned carriers and government operations. Aeroflot and other domestic airlines may operate limited numbers of the aircraft, particularly on routes where Western-built jets are unavailable or impractical. In the long term, much depends on the PD-35. If Russia can successfully develop this engine and integrate it into a twin-engine version of the IL-96, the aircraft's prospects improve significantly. It could become a viable option for airlines in countries with strong economic and political ties to Russia, particularly in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. But even in the best-case scenario, the IL-96-400M is unlikely to seriously challenge Boeing and Airbus in the global market. These companies have decades of experience, established customer relationships, and extensive global support networks. Breaking into that market requires more than just a good aircraft. It requires trust, and trust takes time to build. Still, the IL-96-400M represents something important. It's a statement of ambition, a refusal to accept dependence on Western technology. Whether it succeeds commercially or not, it's a reminder that the aviation industry isn't as monolithic as it might seem. There's always room for challengers, even if the odds are long. And sometimes, the act of trying is just as significant as the result.